we doing today? <laughs> Quick question. Where are my MAGA, ultra MAGA patriots at today? Okay. Well, it's great to be back with you guys here again at CPAC. This is always such a treat to come. But I'll tell you guys, we have our work cut out for us, don't we? It's almost hard to believe all that has happened in the world since Joe Biden took the office of the presidency. It's truly astonishing how much damage someone can do in only three years. The days of a soaring economy, safe and secure borders, and peace in the Middle East are gone. We're now seeing people work two and three jobs just to make ends meet. We have millions and millions of people flooding into our country illegally, of course, given a red carpet rollout and reception by Joe and Kamala. And it feels like we are on the doorstep of World War III. But ladies and gentlemen, I come bearing good news here today because less than nine months away from changing all that, we will see Donald J. Trump elected as the 47th president. I can't wait to be back here with you one year from today under a Trump presidency because don't forget what America and the world looked like under the leadership of President Donald Trump. Historic trade agreements, a soaring economy, a safe and secure border, record low unemployment for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, women, our veterans, the genesis of the United States Space Force, peace agreements in the Middle East, the creation of over a million manufacturing jobs, the largest tax reform package in history, massive deregulation, energy independence, ladies and gentlemen. The appointment of not one, not two, but three Supreme Court justices to the bench. And that was just in four years. Today I look around, and I'm sure you do the same, and I truly do not recognize this country. How many of you go to the grocery store, the gas station, and you wonder, how did we get to this point? How many of you turn on the news at night and go to sleep worrying about the possibility of a world war? This is reality, and this is the America that Joe Biden created. You kind of have to ask yourself, what happened to the Democrat Party? It's a party that once stood for the working class, for women, for equal opportunity, and now seems to stand against all of those things. This is a party that has thrown away all of the values and foundations upon which our country was built and instead embraced a platform that seems to consist of two tenets, wokeness and a burning hot hatred for the one man they never saw coming, Donald J. Trump. The party of JFK is dead now replaced by an ideology that stands against everything that makes us proud United Americans. When our founding fathers wrote the United States Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they used the ideals of equality, freedom, and our Judeo-Christian values as their guides, not socialism, identity politics, and a meritless society. And yet here we are, debating whether biological men are stronger than biological women, letting criminals run rampant in our big cities, and teaching our children to hate this country. I said it right here on this stage last year. This fight is not one between Republicans and Democrats or left versus right, but a fight between good and evil. It's a fight between those who want the United States to prosper and continue to be the leader of the free world and those who want our country to crumble for the benefit of China, Russia, Iran, and every nation working to destroy us. The left told us what they wanted to do, fundamentally transform America. And I hate to point out the obvious, folks, but the transformation of the country we all know and love is happening right before our very eyes. It's happening right now as I speak, and it's happening faster than any of us even realize. Right now, our children, the next generation of leaders, are sitting in their classrooms being taught to despise our values. They're being taught victimhood, 
and hatred as they're indoctrinated to their core against everything for which this country once stood. We all saw the atrocities in Israel on October 7th, the murder, rape, and torture of innocent people just going about their day-to-day -day lives. And the very next day, October 8th, what did we see? College students across America supporting the very terrorists who committed those despicable acts of violence. That's right, our own children here in the United States of America are still rallying and protesting across the country in support of Hamas, a terrorist organization who would love nothing more than to wipe Israel and the United States totally off the map. One thing is clear, ladies and gentlemen, the next generation of Americans is currently lost. Their futures and the future of the entire country hang by a thread. Now, we've all heard it before. People say it every four years. The next election is consequential. The very future of the country depends on it. But this year, this November, the future of our country truly depends on it. It's not, not hyperbole to say that your vote this November decides what becomes of America, and with that, the rest of the world. Now, some of you may know, Eric and I are blessed to have two beautiful children, our son Luke and our daughter, named after my home state, Carolina. And uh, yes, Carolina, we got North Carolina in the crowd, South Carolina. We got a big primary to win on Saturday in North Carolina, ladies and gentlemen, South Carolina. Um, every night, Eric and I have a tradition. We stop whatever we have going on, and we go do bedtime with the kids. And why, while they say their prayers and the Pledge of Allegiance, of course, I often think to myself, what kind of country will they live in in 10, 20, or 30 years? What kind of country are we creating for our children and our grandchildren? I want my son to be proud of who he is. I want him to know that it's okay to be a patriot. It's okay to love God, and it is okay to grow up into a strong, masculine man. I want my daughter to always feel safe here in America, wherever she goes. I want her to play sports on an equal footing with her peers, which means competing against other biological girls. And I want her to understand that in the United States of America, we get ahead and succeed by merit and merit alone. I will never raise her to rely even for one second on the poison and lie of identity politics. Moms and dads, hear me loud and clear. When I say it is up to us, the parents, to ensure the safety and the education of our children. Because whether it's our kids being forced to attend schools that continue to fail them, our kids indoctrinated with critical race theory, or the fabricated notion that you can change your gender like you change your shoes, we must remember it is up to us to protect them because our political leaders have proven they cannot be trusted to do that job. Children are a clean slate. They represent everything that's good in this world. Innocence, curiosity, a love for all, regardless of race, gender, or anything else. And shame on anyone who tries to steal that from them. So some of you may have heard that I've had the great honor of being endorsed by my father-in-law, President Trump, to co-chair the Republican National Committee. I got some fans in here, okay. You guys like this idea. Well, I'll tell you guys, this is a position for which I never imagined I would run, but I also never imagined that our country would be in such dire straits. It is time for change, it is time to fight, and it is time to win, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Now, we know how the Democrats operate. They don't even try to hide it anymore. These are people so desperate to keep President Trump out of the Oval Office, they are willing to use tactics straight out of the communist playbook 
to try and subvert the will of we, the people. They cannot succeed. Now is our time to step up and fight back. Now is our time to say enough is enough. Now is our time to take back our country. And let me just assure everyone here of one thing. What happened in 2020 cannot and will not ever happen again. We must adapt and we must fight fire, not with fire, but with dynamite. We must and we will build the strongest, most secure election operation that this party has ever seen. That's how we have to do this, folks. But we got to adapt a little. As Republicans, I get it, we like to go vote on election day. It's exciting to be a part of that day. It's exciting to fill out the ballot for the future leader of our country. Heck, you even get a little sticker and then you can take a photo and post it on social media. I know, it's very fun. But the truth is, if we want to compete with the Democrats, we cannot wait until election day. If we want to compete, and when we must embrace early voting. The days of waiting until election day to vote are over. We have to encourage everyone who can legally vote to go do so as soon as they legally can. We need so many votes banked for Donald J. Trump that we're not playing catch up on election day. You go vote and then you take your neighbor, your friend, your dentist, heck, I don't care, someone you met on the street, as long as they're voting the right way, every single day up to and on November 5th, because this November, every single legal vote matters. So if elected as co-chair of the RNC, I can promise you, we will not be giving blank checks to career political consultants and vendors. Every penny of every dollar donated will go towards one thing, winning. I promise you that I will do everything in my power to fight for our country, our party, our values, our children, secure elections, and everything else that we all care about in this country. As you know, in 2015, our family was new, shall we say, maybe a better word is naive to politics. When my father-in-law announced his candidacy for president of the United States, nothing really could have prepared us for what was to come. In the last eight years, we have seen and experienced some of the most vicious and evil things. The kind of things I never dreamed that we would ever actually see happen in the United States of America. Let's all remember that right now, Joe Biden continues to weaponize his own Department of Justice against the man that is beating him in the polls and is his number one political opponent. This is straight out of the Soviet Union, ladies and gentlemen. But despite all those vicious attacks and indictments, and lawsuits that, of course, my family has had to endure over the last eight years, we will never stop fighting for this country. It is because of these attacks, not in spite of them, that we continue to fight. And I think my father-in-law, Donald Trump, said it best. My revenge will be success. The United States of America, as young as we are, has seen many challenges, weathered many storms, and despite it all, we have always only grown stronger. America may be fractured, but she is not broken because the American people do not cower. We do not bend, we do not break, we stand strong in our values and our principles and everything that makes us a part of the single greatest country that this world has ever seen. Never forget, ladies and gentlemen, that it is always darkest before the dawn. D-O-N, darkest before the dawn. See what I did? And I believe that Donald Trump was made for such a time as this.
So before I go, I just want to say thank you to you guys. We have a lot of work to do. We have a little time to do it. It will be my great honor to work alongside each and every one of you to put President Donald J. Trump back in that White House, expand our lead in the House, take back the Senate, and make America great again. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you.